Hello friends, welcome to GT Science Tutorial. In this video, I am going to explain about the Raoult's Law, that is lowering of vapor pressure. Raoult's Law is the most important topic of colligative properties chapter. Colligative properties are those properties of the solution that only depends on the number of particles rather than the nature of the particle. And if you want to know what colligative properties actually are, then you can watch my previous video. So in this video, I am going to explain you what Raoult's Law actually is. We are going to see the derivation of of Raoult's law that is frequently asked in examination as well. So let's start. Let us consider there is a vessel in which a solvent is kept and what if we put non-volatile solute into it then obviously there will be some changes in the vapor pressure formed by that solution right. Let me write it over here. Let us consider a vessel containing a solvent, containing a solvent. Let us put, let us put a non volatile solute in the solvent let us put a non-volatile solute in the solvent then what will happen see suppose there is a container or vessel in which there is the solvent then if we put non-volatile solute over here then the upper portion of the solvent molecules is filled with non-volatile solute right some of the non volatile particles will occupy the upper surface over here like this and if the temperature is now increased then what will happen this black circles will try to block all those white circles that is below it right this is the solute blacks are the solute and whites are the solvent then it will try to block all the other uh, particles that is below it and as a result of that it will not allow them to go up it will not allow them to escape from the surface and to form the vapor obviously the particles have to escape from the surface and form vapor and in this case there won't be any formation of vapor from this region and very few number of particles will go up right very few numbers of particle will escape from the surface and they will form the vapor then what do we understand from here is that whenever non-volatile solute is added obviously the vapor pressure decreases initially if there was no black dots then if there was no black circles then these white circles could come out from this region as well but because of this black it can't uh, it, it can't come out of this region so obviously the number of particles in the vapor will be less as a result of that the vapor pressure will be low and this is studied by Raoult's law okay so solute in the solvent the solute will block will block the solvent particles particles from escaping it will block the solvent particles from escaping this is studied in Raoult's law so Raoult's law is associated with the uh, relative lowering of vapor pressure so Raoult's law states that Raoult's law states that there is the statement of Raoult's law let me write it over here the relative lowering of vapor pressure of the solution the relative lowering of the vapor pressure of the solution is equal to the mole fraction the mole fraction of solute 
So this is the statement of Raoult's law that is the relative lowering of vapor pressure of the solution is equal to the mole fraction of the solute. So it all talks about the relative lowering of vapor pressure. Let's see a derivation and let's try to uh, prove this statement given by Raoult. For the derivation of Raoult's law, we need to consider two vessels like this. This is the first vessel A and this is the second vessel B and in that in both of them there is the solvent, solvent molecule. Let me make it. This circle represents the solvent molecules and I am making exactly 15 of them. Here also I will make 15 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3, 4, 5. Now, in the first case, it is the pure solvent. There is no impurity or solute in it. Okay. This is the pure solvent. And at some constant temperature, some of the molecules will escape from the surface and they will form vapor like this. Right. This will come up and it will form vapor. Now, in the second case, consider. let us consider we have added some non-volatile solutes and they occupy some of the spaces on the surface and on the bottom as well like this okay these black circles are solute non-volatile solute these black circles are the non-volatile solute these white circles are the solvent okay now, at a constant temperature, what will happen? From here, the molecule will come up. From here, the molecule will come up. From here also, the molecule will come up. But unfortunately, from this region, the molecule will not come up. The reason is, this will block the uh, solvent molecules that is under them. So, this will not allow them to go. So, obviously, the vapor pressure decreases. You can see over here, in the first case, there are many circles. There are eight circles. In the second case, I've only made three circles so that I can tell you that vapor pressure actually decreases. Now let's write it in language form. Let us consider two vessels, two vessels containing, containing pure solvent and solution with non volatile solute respectively so we have considered two vessels in the first one pure solvent is there in the second one the solution is there with non volatile solute in a that is in vessel a there is no solute so the molecules are free to escape and the vapor pressure is more let us consider this to be p p is the vapor pressure of the solute okay similarly in b in the second vessel non volatile solutes will occupy occupy the surface they will occupy the surface and won't allow and and won't allow the solvent molecules to evaporate evaporate and hence decreases decreases the vapor pressure so they will decrease the vapor pressure let us consider that vapor pressure to be ps here this vapor pressure is ps 
so this is the theoretical part this is the consideration part we have considered two vessels in the first one there is pure solvent in the second one there is the solution with non volatile solute in the first one there is no solutes obviously all the molecules will try to go up and create a lot of vapors over there thereby increasing the vapor pressure in the second case you can see over here this black circles represent non volatile solute and obviously as they are non volatile it will be very difficult for us to convert it into the vapor vapor by heating it so obviously they will try to block all the they will try to block all the white circles that are below it and thereby it decreases the pressure over there because less number of solvent molecules will convert into the vapor and the vapor pressure decreases we have considered the vapor pressure of uh, first case to be p and in the second case it is ps now for the derivation let me erase this portion here let us consider n1 to be the number of moles of solute and two number of moles of solvent p vapor pressure of pure solvent that is in case a and ps is the vapor pressure of a uh, solution solution then lowering of vapor pressure lowering means the decrease in vapor pressure can be calculated by subtracting the smaller value from the larger value here the larger value is p smaller value is ps so it will be p minus ps and relative relative lowering of vapor pressure will be equal to how much to calculate it we just have to divide the uh, lowering of vapor pressure by the larger pressure that is p that is the pressure of the pure solvent so this is the relative lowering of vapor pressure let us consider this to be equation number 1 now see n1 and n2 n1 is the number of mole of solute and n2 is the number of mole of solvent so we can calculate mole fraction of solute and solvent so mole fraction of solute let us consider this to be x1 is equal to it will be n1 by n1 plus n2 number of moles of solute by the total number of moles and mole fraction of solvent that is x2 can be calculated by n2 by n1 plus n2 we are applying the same rule over here that is number of moles of solute by the total number of moles so we get this much now we can see one thing here see the second case okay these molecules are all from here this white circles so if there are more white more white circle that is more number of molecules of solvent on the surface then only more vapor pressure will be formed right more the number of the solvent solvent on the surface greater will be the vapor pressure so we can say that the vapor pressure of the solution depends only upon the mole fraction of the solvent right so vapor pressure that is ps let me write little bit over here in second case in second case that is in b the greater the number of solvent molecules solvent molecules on the surface greater will be greater will be the vapor pressure so we can write that vapor pressure of the solution that is ps is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the solvent mole fraction of the solvent is here that is n2 by n1 plus n2 right and we can write this as ps is equal to if we remove this proportionality sign by uh, if we replace this proportionality sign by equal to we will have to put a constant over here so it will be k n2 by n1 plus n2 this is equation number 2 now let me erase this portion i don't think we need we'll need these things now so till now we have found equation number 2 that is uh, ps 
is equal to k into n2 by n1 plus n2 where this k is the proportionality constant okay it is nothing but a constant value now we will use a condition if if n1 is equal to 0 n1 means number of uh, number of mole of solute if there is no solute then obviously this is the pure solvent case and in that case the value of the vapor pressure of the solution will be equal to the vapor pressure of the solvent that is ps will be equal to p so we are putting this condition over here so it will be in place of ps we can write p right in place of ps we can write p is equal to k into n2 by in place of n1 we need to write 0 plus n2 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 will be cancelled out there will be therefore it will be p is equal to k equation number 3 now let's replace this k by p from equation number 3 then equation 2 becomes equation 2 becomes it will be ps is equal to in place of this k we need to write p into n2 by n1 plus n2 let's do cross multiplication p will come this side it will be ps by p is equal to n2 by n1 plus n2 now let's subtract both of the values from 1 okay so it will be 1 minus ps by p is equal to 1 minus n2 by n1 plus n2 and if you solve it you will get p minus ps by p we are just taking the lcm okay p minus ps by p is equal to if you uh, do, take the lcm that it will be n1 plus n2 minus n2 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 will be cancelled out it will be n1 by n1 plus n2 so we get this as the final expression this is the raoul's law right uh, in the beginning we talked about this p minus ps by p what is this this is the relative lowering of vapor pressure right and that n1 by n1 plus n2 is actually the mole fraction of the solute so here what is it relative relative lower let me write it over here okay it will be easier for us if i write it over here so from that equation what can we conclude relative lowering of vapor pressure is actually equal to the mole fraction of solute and this is the raoul's law the statement of raoul's law says that the relative lowering of vapor pressure of a solution is equal to the mole fraction of solute and by mathematical derivation we actually proved it that is we proved the raoul's law mathematically this derivative this derivation is frequently asked in examination so be careful while learning this derivation and learn it properly so in this video we understood what raoul's law actually is and we derived the expression to prove it as well that's all in this video if you like the videos please share this video as much as you can and thank you for watching the video